Hey there everyone, this is Dan from the Strength Coach Tutor. Today we're going to go over fundamental movements occurring in maximum velocity sprinting. Basically what we're going to look at today is my poor attempt at uh, trying to sprint efficiently. Uh, but really what we're going to look here is through the five different phases of gait, if you will, or the five different phases of uh, what our lower expired, lower extremity experiences while we're sprinting. We're going to look at each of those five phases and what movements are occurring uh, at each of their joints and what type of muscle contractions are we also utilizing at this point too and why uh, I had this slow-mo video here of me again trying to sprint is so that way you can get a good idea of what these movements are actually you know what they look like uh, you know while they're actually being performed and then also trying to tie in um, you know again what movements are occurring at each of these joints and what type of muscle contractions we are utilizing. All right, so the five phases uh, that, of gait that we're gonna look at are early flight, mid flight, late flight, early support, and late support. Now, some will argue maybe uh, there's six that you could also include a mid support in there, but for our purposes, we're just gonna talk about early and late support. And whenever we talk about flight versus support, Flight is when your lower extremity or your foot, I should say, is not in contact with the ground. It's when you're swinging it through. It's when your leg and your foot is flying through the air, if you will, uh, or flowing through the air. And support is at any point when your foot isn't in contact with the ground, no matter to what degree, whether it's just your heels or just your toe, whatever it is, support is when your foot is in contact with the ground. The first phase we're going to look at is early flight. So let's go ahead and play some of this video here so that way we can see what early flight looks like. So again, this is in slow-mo. And so to also give some reference here before we get started is that we're gonna look at my right leg, the leg that's closest to us as we're looking at this video here, right? So my right leg, all right, I'm gonna take one more step. All right, so right, so you can see I'm about to toe off here. As soon as this leg right here, as soon as that leaves the ground, as soon as my toes leave the ground, I'm in early flight. As soon as my toes leave the ground, I'm in early flight. All right. And so the primary movements that are gonna occur here are the eccentric hip flexion and eccentric uh, knee uh, extension. All right. And so what's happening here is that with the eccentric hip flexion, there's really an uh, eccentric contraction of our hip flexors. That's really what's going on. Uh, I'll admit the way they uh, word some of these movements in this table here. Again, this is this box is right before table 19.1 in the textbook. This is where I'm getting some of this information from. I'm honestly not a huge fan of how they word some of this, but and that's why I want to explain this to you guys. But so let's start off here with early flight, eccentric hip flexion and eccentric knee extension is what's occurring here. And so let's look at the hip first. So with eccentric hip flexion, right? As soon as I toe off, you can kind of see as soon as I toe off, I don't do a great job of it, honestly, but what should be happening is that my leg should be swinging backwards, all right? My leg should be, go backwards slightly. And so as it's pushing off, in order to decelerate the rate at which my leg is going back behind me, I need an eccentric contraction of my hip flexors, right? Even though my hip is going to, uh, is trying to go into extension because I'm contracting uh, my uh, gastroc and my hamstrings and my glutes to push off at the end in order to slow that down once my foot's in the air, my hip flexors have to eccentrically contract. And then same kind of concept here with my knee extensors is that my quadriceps are also gonna have to eccentrically contract to slow down the rate at which my heel and my knee uh, bend or my heel swings backwards so that way um, you know, it's not out of control and we want to slow this down so that way we can initiate that next step and bring that leg forward as quickly as we can, right? Because with sprinting, it's about doing our steps as quickly as possible. So if my leg is chilling out behind me all this time, it's not doing me any good, right? Because it's going to take me longer to start taking that next step, right? So again, in early flight, we're going to see an eccentric contraction of our hip flexors and our knee extensors, all right? So the next phase now, we're gonna talk about mid-flight. So mid-flight is essentially rent when as soon as our, our thighs behind us, and now it's starting to, our hip is gonna be right underneath our body, right about there, right? So this process right here. So first of all, we can see if we just look at the hip, 
we have to swing our hip forward, right? And so in order to sw swing our hip forward or bring it forward, we're going to hip flexion, right? And we're working against gravity really to do that. And we're also trying to accelerate our hip and thigh forward. So therefore we're gonna have a concentric contraction of our hip flexors, all right? To, again, to accelerate that hip and thigh moving forward. And with part of this here too, is that we're also gonna see an eccentric contraction of our knee extent, or I'm sorry, an eccentric contraction of our knee flexors, especially at the, uh, towards, we see a little bit more in late flight, but a little bit here in mid flight, right around here, I need an eccentric contraction of my hamstrings because if they're not contracting, then my tibia is just gonna fly forward and my knee's gonna go into extension too early, right? But I don't want that just yet. So up until this point, right before here, I'm still kind of have that little bit of an eccentric contraction of my quadriceps and my knee extensors. But now once I get, once my hip is underneath me and it starts to go in front, now that's gonna transition to an eccentric contraction of my hamstrings or my knee flexors, okay? Next up for late flight, we're still gonna have uh, concentric hip extension, right? So I'm driving that hip forward, right? If my hip's underneath me, and now I'm driving that forward. See, I just went to more hip flexion and I have to work against gravity in order to accelerate it forward. And therefore it's gonna be a concentric hip flexion movement or a concentric hip flexion muscle contraction. We're gonna also have uh, eccentric knee flexion still. So up until this point, once I've gone into my full hip flexion, right, I'm not gonna go into any more hip flexion here. Right about there, now look what happens at my knee joint, right? I'm in about 90 degrees of flexion there, but now, as I, right before my heel touches the ground, look at that. My knee was going from about 90 degrees of flexion to about, I'm, about, I'm just about to touch the ground, maybe about 25 degrees of knee flexion there, maybe 15, somewhere in that range. And so therefore, that's gonna be an eccentric contraction of my hamstrings, an eccentric contraction of my knee flexors, right? They're controlling the rate at which my tibia swings forward and where my heel is gonna land out in front of me. So that's super important there to understand is that right in that late flight phase, my hamstrings are going to eccentrically contract to really dictate where my foot is gonna land out in front of me and how quickly that's gonna to happen too. So after we've, uh, we just went through late flight and now as soon as my uh, heel makes contact with the ground right there, and I start to put weight on my foot right through there, that's gonna be early support, all right? So now, especially once my foot makes contact with the ground, you can see right here, even as I go through uh, late support, through that whole point here, look at my hip. My hip is now gonna go through concentric hip extension, right? I, especially in this early uh, support phase, I'm gonna do um, concentric hip extension to now bring my hip backwards so now I can pull my body forward and accelerate myself forward and sprint, right? It's this point where I'm pulling my body forward. So my hamstrings and my glutes have to concentrically contract, um, you know, as, the, as their role as hip extensors in order to, again, pull my body forward. Um, next, what we're gonna see here is that we're gonna see a little bit of knee flexion, right? Right as soon as I'm making contact with the ground, I'm gonna see a little bit of concentric knee flexion there. And that's gonna more so be to really kind of drive and pull my tibia and my foot through that ground. So that way, I, again, I'm taking as quick as a step as possible, right? And it's kind of, again, to drive through and to pull my body forward. Now, the last part here that is probably arguably one of the most important things that a lot of people don't really recognize or understand with this early support phase is that we see a lot of eccentric plantar flexion. So again, let's look at my right leg there. As soon as I make contact with the ground, look at the angle of my shin or my tibia with my foot, and let's look at how that changes. So I'm making contact with the ground right now, and now right there, right? Now look at that amount of dorsiflexion that I'm in, right? Before I was in about, I wasn't in that much plantar flexion or dorsiflexion at all. I was about pretty neutral right before I was making contact with the ground, but now, I'm probably in about 20 to 25 degrees of dorsiflexion at that point. All right, so what's happening there is that my plantar flexors, my gastrocnemius and my soleus are eccentrically contracting to control the rate at which my tibia is gonna translate forward, if you will, right? And this helps a lot with shock absorption as well. Um, and 
really important for us to slow down. Um, but again, the sprinting, we want to make this as quick as possible, but we also need to have a lot of control in this position as well. But again, we have an eccentric muscle contraction of our plantar flexors during this ear, uh, early support phase. And now lastly, we have our late support phase. So remember when we first talked about, um, what do I want to say here? The uh, early flight phase, remember we had that eccentric hip, fl hip flexion, right? We were controlling the radiator, our hip was gonna uh, swing behind us. Well, now we're also getting to that point here, right? So once I'm going into that late flight and my leg is kind of accelerating behind me, you would think that there's you know, more of a concentric muscle contraction of my hip extensors. There's actually more of an eccentric contraction of my hip flexors, because at this point, we've got the momentum kind of pulling through. And once we're in that late support phase, especially once we're towing off right here, we've kind of achieved the hip extension that we wanted for the most part. And so our hip flexors, are again, are gonna do that eccentric muscle contraction to slow our hip down, if you will, so that we, again, we can take that next step forward as quickly as possible. Also in late support, we're gonna see concentric knee extension, right? So if we can see my knees, probably about 35 to 45 degrees there, and now as I'm pushing off right there, you can see I'm about, I maybe have like five to 10 degrees of knee extension there, right? And so therefore I'm gonna do concentric knee extension during this late support phase. And then lastly, what we're gonna see here is that last bit of plantar flexion, right? Remember during that early support, we had eccentric contraction of our plantar flexors, but now during this late support, you can see right here, especially dorsiflexion and now towing off or plantar flexing, if you will, we have a concentric muscle contraction of our plantar flexors, all right? So guys, overall, this was a review of the fundamental movements occurring during maximal velocity sprinting. If you have any questions or comments, concerns, whatever it may be, please feel free to drop them in the comment section below. And don't forget to hit subscribe and smash that like button for us. And if you guys have any other questions or you need further assistance in terms of studying or preparing for your NSCA CSS exam, please head over to the strengthcoachtutor.com and check out our online classroom and our individualized tutoring resources. All right, guys, thanks again for watching. We really appreciate it. And until next time, see you later.